Hi, this is Mike from ScaleTrains.com again, and today we're here to talk about our all-new Tier 4 Jeevos in our rivet counter line. This is a project we work very closely with General Electric on, and since we've tooled so many variations on these models, for simplicity's sake, we're going to focus on three road names, the BNSF C4s, the Canadian National, and the GECX demos. For more information on the other road names, take a look at our website. So now let's take a closer look at the fine detail on these rivet counter models. In this nice roster image, we can take in all the detail that is the all-new Scale Trains Rivet Counter Tier 4 Jeevo and BNSF. This version is a C4, meaning that there are two additional quote-unquote brake cylinders on each side frame. These are used to raise the center axle ever so slightly to relieve pressure on the center axle. By relieving the pressure on the center axle, that creates more pressure on the outboard axles, increasing tractive effort on those axles. The C4 truck on the prototype is an A1A design designating that the center axle does not have a traction motor. In this close-up image, you can see the high level of detail, including the photo-etched windshield wipers, nose door lock mechanism, operating ditch lights, wire grab irons, MU hose and cable, coupler cup bars, and snow plow. This engineer side cab view shows the tinted side windows, see-through dynamic brake openings, finely printed builder's plate, and other safety labels. This also gives us a good side view of the C4 truck. In this next image, we have a real close-up of the right rear C4 truck frame. You will notice the separate spinning bearing caps, brake and sanding line details. Also on the end of the fuel tank, there is a retention tank. Notice the fine etched and formed grills on the rear side of the long hood. As we continue on our tour of this exciting model, we'll see another close-up image of the C4 truck. You will see all the plumbing for the brake cylinders along with the plumbing for the two cylinders that actuate the center axle. Look at all that underbody plumbing. We don't think anyone else in our industry is going to this level of detail. In our next image, this shows the fireman's side of the cab and trucks. Take a look at the small printing on the cylinders, side frame and dampening strut on the top of the truck. Also notice the now standard electronic bell mounted on the front of the fuel tank. This side frame also has rotating bearing caps. In this left rear image, you can again see the finely etched and formed grill detail on the hood side. There's also nicely tooled brake wheel along with the electronic brake detail and labeling around the brake wheel. As part of the parking brake detail, there is an extensive chain and spring system used for the brake system to apply the brakes. This truck along with the right front are equipped with the cantilevered shock struts on the two outboard axles. This close-up view of the dynamic brake exhaust shows the fine detail in the dynamic brake exhaust along with the secondary railing on the handrail stanchions. The top cover plate is separately applied so that we get the proper undercut detail. Up on the roof you can see the finely cast brass horn. It's both finely detailed and also very sturdy. Again, you can see the separate top cover over the air filter compartment, achieving the correct undercut detail for this part. Also notice the fine hinge and lift ring details. The cab roof is very busy with the PTC antenna array. There are three large Sinclair and three small Sinclair antennas, along with other antennas. They are mounted on two large cabinets. You can also see the etched mirrors and sunshades in this image. This BNSF version sports the modified roof contour around the exhaust stack. The roof line was modified from the original design due to some clearance issues on the CSX Railroad. The radiator wing is the dead giveaway that this is a Tier 4 locomotive. There are four large radiator panels on the roof with etched grill on top and finely molded, molded detail under the grills. Also you can see the flat surfaces, the standard GE bumps used for traction when service personnel are walking on the roof. In the final image of our BNSF Tier 4 C4, you can really see the mass of the large radiator wing. These are much larger than previous Jeevos. You can also see the rear sand filler hatch, many separately applied parts from the rear pilot, including the spare knuckle holders. As is typical with locomotives being built for north of the border, they can have some speci special features that are not typically requested south of the border. This makes for some interesting variations. The Tier 4 Jeevo is no exception. The CN3000 represents an early production Tier 4 Jeevo with a unique Canadian feel. Let's take a closer look. 
In the second image, we can see one feature that makes the CN unit different from US production. It's the extra light above the ditch light on the fireman's side. This is a DPU light and operates when the locomotive is in DPU configuration. There is one of these lights at both ends. So whichever end of the locomotive is not facing the train, the light at that end will be on signifying the end of the train. You can also see in this image the finely detailed separately applied parts on the pilot including the MU cable, MU hoses, snow plow, and coupler cut bar. In this overhead cab shot you can see the different type of antenna arrangement used in the CN units with four different antenna domes being used. Through the large windshield you can see a complete multi-piece cab interior. This image shows the side of the long hood and the early production side access door arrangement with the lower roof line over the engine compartment but still having the higher roof line over the exhaust area. This photo also shows all the intricate plumbing for the air tanks and other under the walkway details. This overhead view helps to show the early production roof line again with the lower roof over the engine section and the raised roof section over the exhaust. Later production units, like we saw on the BNSF C4, have this area angled to match the roof line at the radiator section. At the front of the engine section, you can see the standard five chime horn that is used on all production units. Also note the many multicolored warning labels. These are bilingual and under magnification should be readable. Probably one of the neatest features on both the prototype and on our model are the see-through walkway grating. This is done with photo etch sections placed over holes in the walkway. This is done on the prototype so that snow does not build up on the walkways and it is designed to fall through the openings in the walkway. This could be the first time anyone has done this on a plastic model. In this rear end shot you can see the DPU light on the top of the ditch light. Also notice the unique CN rear snow plow at the bottom of the pilot. Other details include the see-through steps, many separately applied plastic wire form and etched metal parts. The GECX demo units were obviously the first tier 4 G was produced and as such has some unique features about them. Some of these features made it into production units and some did not. We have faithfully reproduced these with all of those unique details. In this roster shot, you can see that these ride on the standard high ad trucks. They share the large wing for the radiator section and similar underbody details. They also share the complete multi-piece cab interior. So now let's take a look at some of these similarities and also what makes these units different from the production locomotives. Up on the cab roof, these units have the same PTC antenna array that was found on the BNSF units. Same photo etched windshield wipers, wire form grab irons, and photo etched mirrors and sunshades. In this image of the engine section, the most obvious difference between the GECX units and the production units can be seen, and that would be the roof line. The roof line in this area is much higher on the GECX units, and there's a second row of doors above the standard doors on the hood side. In this next image, we get another look at the raised roof line over the engine compartment. In this photo, you will also see another difference between these units and the production units, and that would be the horn arrangement. On the GECX units, they actually use two horns, a three chime horn facing forward and a two chime horn mounted in the rear section of the radiator wing. This is opposed to the standard five chime horn used on all production units. To take it a step further, the two horns of the GECX units actually work independently from each other, meaning that only the horn facing the direction of travel blows when the horn button is pressed. That means that the locomotive is moving forward, the three chime horn on the roof blows, and if the unit's in reverse, the two chime horn in the rear wing blows. Our model will be able to achieve these sound features. This photo shows us an early roof configuration for the exhaust area. On the GECX units and early production units, the roof line along this area followed the raised roof contour over the engine section on the GECX units. Note how the exhaust stack is flush with the roof line compared to the exhaust stack being exposed on the BNSF C4 model. In this final view of the GECX unit, you can see the detail of the standard high ad truck. Note the spinning bearing caps, cantilevered shock struts, and delicate parking brake chain and spring detail. Also pay particular attention to the traction motor cable detail and other plumbing details under the walkway. Now that you've had a chance to take a look at the fine detail on these new models, we hope that you can see the difference. For more information, you can follow us on Facebook 
or check out our webpage at www.scaletrains.com. Thanks for watching.